Hey guys, welcome back to Coming In TV, the only place on YouTube where all geek culture collides. Today on the show, we're taking a look at Saban's Power Rangers Lightning Collection, Dragon Shield Black Ranger. So in case you hear anything in the background, that's the rain because it's storming today. So let's get on with it. This, of course, is the Saban's Power Rangers Lightning Collection Dragon Shield Black Ranger from Hasbro. Uh, this is from the Oyster Stew episode of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers uh, from Season 1, I believe. I'm pretty sure it was Season 1. Oyster Stew, where uh, Zack ends up getting hit by one of the oysters' uh, slime or whatever that uh, weakens him. And so Tommy gives him his power shield to help power him up, back up. Zach, are you okay? I came as soon as I heard you call me. Tommy, don't touch me. He's spraying me with some kind of acid gel, and it get you too. Uh. Zach, here, take my shield. The power's in it will heal you and give you energy. Thanks, Tommy. What about you? I'll be okay. So anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at the box. This, of course, is a Walgreens of exclusive. We have Zack here on the front wearing the power shield. We have the Saban's Power Rangers Lightning Collection logo there. Dragon Shield Black Ranger. There's the side, a nice picture of Zack. There's the back. And there's the other side. We got the original Mighty Morphin Power Rangers logo up top there. Now let's go ahead and open him up and take a look at the Black Ranger. All right, so here we have Zack, the Mighty Morphin Black Ranger, the original Black Ranger from the first couple seasons of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. I have held off for quite a while on collecting these. Uh, I haven't collected Mighty Morphin Power Rangers figures since I was a kid. Uh, and so I was hesitant on picking these up, but I'm kind of coming, coming around. And I decided that if I'm gonna collect these, I'm only gonna collect specific teams. Uh, of course, I'm going to start with the OG Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, and I'll probably end up collecting the entire Zordon era, which is Mighty Morphin, Zeo, Rangers in Space, uh, the Alien Rangers, and Turbo. And then, well, I may not collect Turbo. I'm not sure. Uh, that was that was probably my least favorite of the Zordon era was the Turbo Rangers. Um, but then, if I collect any others, it'll probably be... Uh, Dino Thunder and Power Rangers Ninja Storm. Uh, those were really the only two post Zordon era Power Rangers shows that I really uh, liked. Anyway, let's get into it. This, of course, is Zack. And the detail on him is really nice. I like how they made it look. And again, sorry for the rain noises, guys. The uh, ceiling is really close to the roof. There's really no space between here. So, you can hear pretty much everything. But anyway, I like how they actually made the creases and everything in the uh, uniforms. And they didn't have them overly muscular like some of the old school figures did. And how even uh, some of the comics have. Uh, they really made it look like uh, pretty close to how they looked in the show. You have a really nice silver paint job on the helmet silver and gold really because the eyes and the line around the well the line around the top of the helmet is a goldish color it looks like uh, maybe silver it just depends on the lighting uh, but the eyes of the mastodon are gold the tusks and the lines of the uh, trunk are silver. You can vaguely make out the white turtleneck underneath. And the, the armbands, armbands are molded or sculpted into the actual arms. And you have very nice, I've seen some figures where they do way too many of the diamonds on the gauntlets of the gloves, but these are almost perfect. Uh, four diamonds on the boots. And then you've got one, two, three, four diamonds on the gauntlets of the gloves, uh, which is perfect. Uh, 
they didn't have any more or any less fewer than that uh, and you can make out the dragon shield is a separate piece so you can make out his diamonds underneath which is very nice now i did check to see if the dragon shield could be removed and while it may be possible i wouldn't recommend it because as i tried to remove it uh it wouldn't move past the armbands and i had a feeling i stopped before i even tried to get them past i had a feeling that this part was going to tear if i tried to force it uh, so i just left it um, maybe with a blow dryer on hot uh, you can soften that up a little bit to pull it off if you want to um, but i'm just going to leave it on looks cool he looks very gold ranger-esque uh, so let's go ahead and get into the articulation before we get into all the accessories. First things first, the head is on a pegged uh, a peg with a hinge. So it can look up that far. And it can look down that far. It can also look side to side all the way around. Now, if you want him to look up further or look down further... He has two ab crunches. He's got the upper ab crunch here, which is partially hidden by the dragon shield, right there. And then he's got a lower ab crunch, which doubles as a back crunch as well, which is really nice. I really like that. Uh, I wish more figures came like that. Um, stretch the back. Just like that and have them bend over just like that there is however no waist swivel which that's that's okay because the upper ab crunch works as a waist swivel which is cool uh, the belt is a separate piece entirely it does have the holster for the blaster uh, the legs can go up to there uh, not so much back it's hindered by his butt uh, to the side uh, this one is kind of hindered a little bit um, not by the uh, gun holster or the blaster holster but mainly just just by the sculpt uh, same with this side now if you want him to kick higher you just kind of lean lean both of them uh, there is a hip swivel a double knee joint ratchet joint and there's one okay then there's the second one now we bring them both there's that and there is a boot swivel as well as an ankle rocker uh, not too much uh, tilting for the ankle rocker though uh, then up top you have the shoulder which is on a ball joint and hinge can get up to there rotate around can get up to there it's kind of hindered a little bit by the dragon shield which is a soft rubbery plastic okay and then it's got a shoulder a bicep swivel and i love the placement of the joints as well because they really blend in with the sculpt of the figure other than the elbow and knee joints uh, you got double elbow joints right there then you've got no gauntlet articulation but the hands are on a peg 
and hinge so they can come out and go in that far uh, they can swivel just like that okay sorry about that now let's go ahead and we'll get into some of the uh, all of the accessories first things first we'll get the blaster um, one thing they did not do with these blasters is make them convertible and what I mean by that is if you remember in the original Mighty Morphin Power Rangers series they could transform the blasters to where they were like little little sword type dagger things and what that was was they would straighten the handle make bring it to here and then they would push this up so it acted like the blade that is the one thing the only really the only problem I'm, i have with this figure is they did not do that uh, it would have been a nice little uh a nice little throwback to the original series and that does fit right in his blaster holder right there Okay, which they probably wouldn't be able to get away with nowadays because of all the all the gun control arguments and all this that's going on in the world. But then you have the power axe. <clears throat> One thing I found really awesome was that Hasbro went the extra step with the power axe and made it convert into the power blaster for when they bring them together. And it looks like they can actually bring them together. As you can see here with the sights, the sword would go in there. The bow, Kimberly's bow would go across here, just like that. It would actually, looks like it would probably snap in there. And then the uh, power daggers and the power lance uh, but it also comes with this blast effect. And this right here just goes just like that. Now, they should have made this a little bit longer, the uh, effect that enters there, because it doesn't really want to stay in that well. Any little bump knocks it out. And that does fit into... Zach's hands you can have him hold it like the power blaster which takes just a little bit because of how his hands are just like that and like I said it does take a little bit to get his hands to go around the handles of the axe blaster all that uh, that's how he holds it pretty much um, when it comes to the blaster and then for the axe bring this back up and it is a softer rubbery plastic uh, but don't bend it too much because you are liable to break it but see how his hands are sculpted I'm I don't really like that I wish they would have made it uh, a little bit easier maybe separate hands for the different uh, ways in which he holds his power weapon but can't really hold it with two hands when it's in this mode so that's that we'll go ahead and take that out uh, something else he came with was his de-helmeted head just pops off it's on a big ball joint snaps on just like that and there's Zach the OG Black Ranger and now something I wish they would do with the basic Rangers um, the ones without power shields whatnot is like 
with Jason, Trini, and Zach. What they should have done is included an alternate head sculpt for Adam, Aisha, and Rocky. I think that would have been really nice. Uh, fans have their favorites. And that would have gave fans the option of how to display them. Either it was, either they display them as Zach, Trini, or Jason, or as Rocky, Adam, and Aisha. So I, I do kind of have a problem with that. Now I, I do understand with this Black Ranger, only Zach wore the Dragon Shield, but they could have included the Operation Overdrive power vest and made this removable and included Adam's head so that you could have swapped between the two Black Rangers. Since Adam did appear in, did wear the Operation Overdrive power vest in the Operation Overdrive episode, or not Operation Overdrive episode, I think. Maybe it was Operation. I can't remember. <laughs> like, I didn't stay up to date on the post Lord on era. I'm sorry. But anyway, the episode Once a Ranger, Always a Ranger. So there's that. And he does come with two alternate hands. Snap those off. He comes with a fist, as you can see here. And it just snaps in. I don't really like... There we go. You really have to change the placement of the uh, peg on the fist before you pop it in because it is kind of difficult to adjust the hinge afterwards. So there's the fist and for the other hand, it's kind of tight. He has the karate chop feature, the uh, hand chop. So now let's go ahead and place him back uh, well, we'll go ahead and uh, zoom in on his head and let you guys get a nice look at Zach without his helmet, without his weapon, uh, just like this. We'll scroll up, uh, we'll do it all the way around, and then we'll put his helmet on, put his power axe in his hands, and give you guys a good look at that. If you enjoyed that video, make sure you hit the subscribe button right there so you can stay up to date on all things geek culture. Also, go ahead and check out one of these two playlists on the side for more videos just like the one you just watched. I'm Shannon for Comic TV, the only place on YouTube where all geek culture collides. Take care, geeks.